Well, this is an interesting one. Uh, so teabagging makes a comeback and activists at Game of Sutra are uh, very upset about it. So uh, if you're a gamer, you know what teabagging is. But for anybody that doesn't, uh, it's, it's when you crouch on top of a defeated opponent in a game, usually multiple times, indicating that you're dropping your nut sack on them, essentially. You know, you're, you're, some people would say taking a dump on them, but that's, that's primarily what it's supposed to be. That's why it's called teabagging. And it's a classic, you know, I remember teabagging people in Unreal Tournament back in the nineties, you know, uh, even Duke Nukem, I believe you could do it. It's, um, it's just a way to fucking rub it in. Like I got you, bitch. I have a recent one when I was playing. Now I, I, I've since quit uh, Classic WoW, but when I was playing, we got into a PvP situation in uh, the Auchendoon Crips area, uh, for anybody that's familiar. And um, we ended up killing some horde, and uh, a, f- a friend from the guild was like, oh, how do I, how do I teabag him? You know, so we were, t- oh yeah, press the X key and then you'll crouch and you just keep spam pressing it. And so he did. And, um, apparently this, this guy was so fucking mad. He looked up our guild on Google, found our discord listed on a website, joined our discord and, um, started screaming and, and ranting about how mad he was at us. Um, so yeah, teabagging pisses people off. You know, it's it's a sign of dominance. It's a sign. It's a taunt. It's a it's a fuck you moment. And um, so the the comeback of teabagging, I don't think it ever really left. What it is is certain devs, certain games have spent less time on when you're dead uh respawn and activision are ones like this they they go to either a kill cam or they switch to an a, another player's perspective rather than looking at you when you die so that they can just avoid this kind of thing however in games that don't have that teabagging has never gone away it's always been the thing it's universal and um, if it happens to you, you might get mad. I usually just laugh, you know, and I'm like, yeah, yeah, you got me. And so here we are. Uh, why is Gama Sutra even talking about it? Well, because apparently, and yet in the last week, I spotted two different developers seemingly giving a wink and nod to the act of teabagging in their multiplayer games. 343 Industries and 1047 Games. So... What he means by that is the new Halo demo, stress test, whatever they were calling it, the bots were programmed to teabag. And the reason that you would do that, why you would program your bots to teabag, is because you don't want people to know that it's bots. That's the reality of it, because... What you could do if you have competent enough bots that feel like players is future-proof your game from a lagging player base at any point in time. It will be full. It just won't all be humans, but there will be bots. Uh, Battle Royale games do this. Fortnite does this. Um, It is what it is, right? Sometimes they're just easy kills for you to rack up. If you uh, tune the difficulty too much, they might fuck you up. But it's usually easy to spot a bot because they're not going to do shit like teabag you. Except now, apparently, in Halo Infinite, they are. So, uh, during the test where players took on bots of varying skill levels, players noticed something surprising. Some bots seem to be programmed to teabag their opponents. With the aforementioned notion of teabagging and Halo being affiliated with one another, yes, very much so, it's not entirely surprising that someone would think of this as a cute acknowledgement of the game's community history. 
Yeah, that's that's what it and and to make the bots more realistic feeling so that it's harder to spot them out as I, I, I think from a game development side that's what they were going for. Uh an acknowledgement to the game's community history, sure, but really they just want to be able to put bots into your multiplayer match, I think. The public reactions mostly been one of pleasant bewilderment and amusement, and I'm not surprised. It's funny to see bots mimic human behavior. There's no person controlling the individual bot. No one person is trying to show dominance. And the AI is just going, all right, someone at 343 told me to do this. Okay. Um, zero, one, one, zero, right? That's, let's just break everything down to that. Obviously, code is programmed with intent by a human being, dude. I don't know if you realize it. It's not just, um, it's, it's not just ones and zeros. I don't know. But there's no denying it does set the stage for the community's interaction with the game to come. It feels like a subtle nod from 343 saying, hey, yeah, we get it. This is a taunt. Go for it. Yeah, because they can't... Okay, the only way you could stop people from teabagging... Let me clue you in, Gama Sutra, or what, what's this guy's name? Bryant Francis. You have to take out crouching. Entirely. You have to take a game mechanic out. Because all it is is I press the crouch button a couple times on your face. Do, what do you want them to do? Ban it? You want you want people to get kicked out of the game? You want uh, permanent bans, vac bans, and um, yeah, just permanent game bans? You're an idiot. Elsewhere, 1047 Games released a stat tracking system in split gate arenas on its career page that tracks how often players teabag their opponents. Based? Sorry, but yeah, uh, you could get melee kills, double kills, triple kills, quad kills, quint kills, and teabags. That's fucking awesome. That's great. I fully support that. That is a stat that people will put a lot of fucking faith in. In fairness, it's buried in the menus and is a tracker only individual players can see. You have to care about those numbers to go access them. If you don't want to engage in teabagging, you don't see other players' numbers and can keep yours firmly planted at zero. Not great, not terrible, but the company's social media team then puts out tweets like this. Oh God, Twitter, we gotta cancel, you can't make jokes on Twitter, guys. Things you never ask. A woman her age, a man his salary, a split gator their tea bags. That's, that's just funny. I what? The cultural weirdness of the rest of the tweet notwithstanding. No, they were making fun. They were making fun of you, dude. They were making fun of you specifically. Like you who would write this article about tea bagging. The social media post in question puts a player's tea bag count on a weird pedestal, making it a treasured number. To keep close to one's chest. No. I'm going to be frank. Seeing these incidents makes me feel like I've jumped realities. I've just spent the last three weeks writing about the state of California's lawsuit against Activision Blizzard for allegedly. Allegedly. Fostering a culture of sexual harassment and discrimination. A culture of sexual harassment at work and bleed into sexual harassment in game as numerous reports have alleged that unnamed Blizzard employees would joke about raping other people when playing multiplayer matches. A bunch of unconfirmed reports by unnamed people from unnamed employees said a thing. Fucking hate this bullshit. Spending weeks writing about that situation and to turning around and seeing chuckles and backslapping for teabagging jokes is just baffling. No, it's not. I don't want to be a woke scold. You are, bro. Bro, you are the woke scold of the week. Or sound naive here, I'm not blind to the fact that different groups of people are going to have different tolerances for sexual humor, and that if you have a crouch mechanic in your multiplayer game, someone is probably going to use it to debag. That horse left the barn decades ago, then what's your fucking, what are you crying about then? What are you crying about, pussy? 
And I can't even good faith ask for tech that slows down crouching to make it difficult to do the move. Crouch spamming has also taken on a new meaning in recent years across different games. In Apex Legends, it's an occasional way for enemy teams to show signs of friendliness or solidarity, especially during in-game events when there are only two teams remaining in a match. Okay, so it means different things in different contexts. Cool story, bro. It's absolutely reasonable to support players who want to find a way to express joy or dominance after winning a skirmish. Emote animations and sprays have emerged as healthier alter- Dude, the reason people want a teabag, I- This is what happened, right? This is what happened. Ladies and gentlemen, this guy got teabagged the fuck because he sucks at these games. That's what happened here. This guy is sick and tired of getting teabagged he he won't quit playing first person shooters which he's just terrible at and he keeps getting teabagged and it's fucking rotted his brain he's incapable of fucking understanding that it's just fucking funny yes it is me dropping my nuts on your face dude that's exactly what it is you could you could look at it however you want it's a fucking silly thing the gamers do and then laugh at and if you fucking don't want to be a part of it don't play those kind of games don't play competitive multiplayer games that have that fucking mechanic available for you to fucking do how's that oh no you got to take it away from everybody else who likes it who doesn't find a problem with it but let's be clear here teabagging is a clear and explicit sexual reference yep just said it was that means when it's unwanted or undesired, it's sexual harassment. Get fucked. Get fucked. You know when you consented to it? When you joined the game. You consented to be murdered. You consented to have people trash talk you, emote you, and yes, drop their nuts on your face. You consented. You know how you can revoke your consent? Stop playing the fucking game. Uh, I believe it was... Tyler, the creator, that said, if you feel like you're getting online harassment, like, just turn the computer off and go outside. Like, what are you, what are you talking about, you fucking moron? <sighs> Developers encouraging or winking and nodding at the act blunt their own ability to build cohesive policy around other forms of sexual harassment. No, they don't. Fuck you. It's a bit hard to take seriously the notion that other sexually suggestive insults deserve a ban. When this one can roam free. I agree. I agree. Calling you a pussy and saying you you suck at the game. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this. This guy, this guy, when it comes to first person shooters, he sucks big dick. Big veiny dick. And then he gets nuts dropped on his face. As a result of the big veiny dicks that he sucks. I guess that should be banned too, right? Ban everything. Yeah, ban everything this man doesn't like. Everybody should just live in bubbles and um, only use approved corporate speak. Fuck you. Last year, Emily Greer, Emily Greer, I don't know who that is, hit the nail on the head in her CDC summer talk. When, what, what, GDC? I don't know. A game developer conference. Okay. When she said harassment is only sometimes about sex, but it's always about. Yeah. We can say the same thing for teabagging. Yes. Teabagging is literally just an express. It has nothing to do with sex at all. It is what you would consider a sexual act, except that it's not because neither party is getting any type of sexual gratification out of it. What they're getting out of you is a reaction and Boy, did they ever get a reaction because you wrote this piece of shit article. <laughs> you fucking idiot. It's an act of establishing power, particularly sexual power over your opponent. No, it's not. It's not about sexual power. See, that's where you make the mistake. It's about, I killed you, bitch. I'm a better gamer than you. And you wouldn't know that because you're a terrible one. Well, you write for Gamma Sutra, so that explains everything. It's ridiculous for developers to support or condone this behavior while the industry tries to figure out how to make safer workplaces not riddled with sexual harassment or abuse. Okay. One, alleged. Everything to do with the Blizzard lawsuit is alleged. 
I have not seen any evidence in that lawsuit that any of it is true. No compelling evidence whatsoever. If I was a jury juror on that case and all I had to go on was that, all the defense would have to do is say, Your Honor, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, that's a bunch of bullshit. And I'd be like, yeah, that sounds reasonable. Yeah, I agree. Not guilty. All right. That's that's the Blizzard lawsuit in a nutshell. And if you don't fucking agree with that, you haven't read it straight up. And if you fucking make excuses like some of the people on my other video did, of, oh, they just didn't release all the evidence because you wouldn't want to show your hand to the defense and give them a chance. Bitch, it's called full disclosure. You have to. You have to give the defense everything that you fucking have. So if they had something, they'd fucking give it. That's literally the nature of a fair trial in a fucking American justice system. What the fuck are you on about? So if they had evidence, they'd show it. There's no evidence in that fucking lawsuit. It's all hearsay. He said, she said, bullshit. There's not one instance of verifiable shit. You want to talk about if there was fucking rape and shit going on? Sure. You know, give me give me the fucking uh, rape kit. If you want to talk about there was... Um, this guy drinking and making sexually fucking inappropriate jokes. Yeah. Yeah, that is that inappropriate at work? Probably. Is that a culture of harassment? No, it's not. It's it's first of all, first of all, you shouldn't be drinking at work. On the job, period. End of fucking story, right? If that that, that, that it is what it is. If you're in a professional environment, you should not be drinking. The fact that they have drinking parties, and the thing is, these woke scolds would love drinking parties at their fucking work anyway. They don't want to get rid of that, and they don't want to get rid of, like, interpersonal interactions. I mean, you could just put everybody in a fucking cubicle and never have them interact with each other on the fucking clock. You could do shit like that, right? These woke scolds wouldn't like that. But everything and anything is fucking... They don't fucking like it. See, this is exactly what I'm talking about when I talk about activists. These are people that use their position to push an agenda by any means necessary. Whether it's fucking true or whether it's a half-truth or whether it's a flat-out fucking lie. And they push it and they, they pretend like they're not pushing an agenda. This guy has an agenda. He wants to write an article essentially about Blizzard's fucking shit, right? But it's all been done to death. So now he's mad about teabagging in a game and then brings that back up. And then acts like every fucking game company under the sun is being accused of the same thing. See, notice how he gets to this part it's, and it's not just Blizzard anymore. Notice it's like, well, these companies, companies, which companies? Specify which companies that you say that this is a fucking problem at. Why don't you start slandering them? Hmm? All right. You're, you're not going to commit libel on your fucking blog, are you? No, because you know what you're doing is bullshit. This is, this is activist bullshit. You, you get mad. You freak out, you try and whip up a fucking mob to go after 343 and fucking 1047. God, naming your studio a number is so stupid, but whatever. These people have just made fucking in-jokes with their audience. And yes, first-person shooter players, by and large, if you went around and asked the majority of them, do you get really, really mad and feel sexually assaulted? When somebody teabags you in a game, they're going to be like, no, what the fuck is wrong with you? As, if, if, have you ever fucking had a friend? Have you ever had male friends, Bryant, Francis? Have you ever had male friends? Probably not. I don't imagine you have. You, have you ever had bros, you know? Have you ever had a bit of banter? No, no, definitely not. Banter would fucking be a microaggression and you would want the person that did the banter with you to be banned from everything, right? Fuck these people. Fuck their activism. 